here's a great example of how we can tell the sex of a giraffe. Let me zoom into this guy. Or he gave it away. If you look on the top of the Aussie cone, whoop, don't go down too much. You've got a bald patch. Like an old guy with bald on top of the head. So the horns, the Aussie cones, are bald on top. So that's a bull. The back of them, if you have a look at those Aussie cones, even though we're quite far away, you can see that they're pretty pointy at the top, meaning that the tufts of hair go right on the top of that Aussie cone. So that's a cow, and we're looking for one of the cows in this group to have a little unit attached to that Aussie cone at the top. Let's see if we can find her. Not that one. Not that one either. And there she is, nibbling away, a little bit spiteful, behind the tree. So we'll get a little closer to see whether you can see that uh, satellite unit. I'm super happy that I found her. She's looking really, really good. It would be nice to be able to get a little bit closer, maybe get ahead of them. A little bit of an elephant path here. That'll help. Sorry guys, I'm not going to hassle you a lot longer. I just want to get a nice view of that little Aussie cone unit. And there she is. You have a look at the uh, her right Aussie cone. You'll see there's a tiny, tiny little box. So that's a satellite unit. It also has a solar panel, so it uh, records uh, for a very long time because it recharges with the sun. Ideal for a giraffe. It doesn't get in the shade very much. So this is where the GPS is super useful. I've gone on a fair way off-road after these giraffes. Now. I can cause minimal impact and find my way back just by retracing my steps. We're back on the main road. And it's interesting in this project we have uh, different types of telemetry that we're using on the animals. So the giraffe, as you saw, have a satellite unit, um, high tech. It has a solar panel to recharge it. It also has an accelerometer looking at how the movements of the animals um, are on the X, Y, and Z uh, planes. And uh, now we're going to be looking at the other one, the Springbok. The Springbok also have GPS units, but they're not satellites. So they store 
the data in the unit until we get close enough to be able to download those data. Now it can take months and months of data before we need to download and we need to be within about 500 meters of the animal. And what makes it easier to find the Springbok um, is that they have a UHF signal, a ping, that we can follow uh, to be able to find the animal to download the data. This is typical springbok habitat. Uh, they like these plains. Um, this is the uh, remnants of the Tosha pan slopes. And these pan slopes have uh, very nutritious aromatic shrubs, um, like these salsolas, these are little shrubs that you can see down here. Um, and the springbok are grazers and browsers, so that means they eat grass as well as uh, leaves and shoots of shrubs and trees um, and a lot of the times when they're in these open plains and it looks like they're eating grass they're actually eating um, these little shrubs that are all over. UHF signal of the Springbok Collet helps us to find the animals so that we can download their movement data. So it's a bit of a treasure hunt. It's actually great fun. That sound that you hear is the signal, the ping signal that the animal gives off. Now every animal has a different frequency. So if you punch in the frequency um, of each specific animal and you get the signal, you'll know exactly which animal it is that you have. So you can hear the specific animal that we have here. So it's directional. If I take the antenna, and I move it around, you can see that the signal gets louder, softer, depending on the direction. Now that's exactly the direction. As I move it away, directionality doesn't make that much of a difference, but you can see moved away. There your sound is at its loudest.
So that's Springbok 6774. She's one of the collared animals. So as she walks, she's collecting GPS data for us.